Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and this is the Korg ModWave, Korg's hybrid uh, wavetable sample playback synth, which also has a virtual analog uh, sort of end at the, at the end, really, really uh, good effects as well. Uh, but actually, the part of the name that's most interesting to me is the mod part, because the modulation sources on this and how they all interact are really, really interesting. And that's something that I really want to dig into in some depth uh, on the channel in some upcoming videos. But... This is a new polysynth to the channel, so as tradition dictates, today we are going to be building a pad patch from scratch. So in terms of the type of pad we're going to aim for today, it is of course um, very possible and very um, tempting to do a big ambient washi pad, or even a sort of lean into the sort of uh, early days of wavetable type sounds. But um, I thought it would be interesting to maybe go to a different place. So um, what we're going to aim for today is a bit of a darker, grittier kind of sound, maybe kind of drawing inspiration from the sort of thing that, um, say, uh, Trent Reznor would use sort of, as a, sort of like a bed to a song or something. That sort of, sort of slightly evil sounding, but still sort of classic sounding thing going on there. So that's what we're going to aim for. We'll see how we get on. Um, uh, oh, um, in the interest of transparency, uh, Korg sent the mod wave over to me to make some videos on. I'm not getting paid for any of the videos, uh, and they have no say in what I do in the videos, but that is the situation here. Um, right. Let's make a pad, I guess. So we're here on an initialized patch, which is uh, making use of the um, basic... Um, sort of virtual analog wavetable, which is all good. Now, we will start digging into all of our wavetables and samples in just a second. But there's one thing that um, I like to do with most of the patches I've been playing with this. And it's something that um, uh, that I kind of often had to do via uh, the mod matrix on the OP6, but there's actually functionality built in for this. And that's essentially introducing some uh, oscillator drift so that there's... Um, sort of some detuning between the notes, not just sort of between the oscillators, which just gives you an over more, overall more sort of rich sound to my ears in most cases. Sometimes you want that really sort of in tune hardness, but for, for this sort of patch in particular, I think having things a little bit wonky is probably going to be a benefit. So um, we want to be in the perform menu here and a uh, couple of pages in, we're looking for yeah, the random pitch range here. So we start off with this very in tune kind of sound and then somewhere around eight cents um, tends to be a good sort of sweetening without it obviously sounding out of tune so we go from always the same there and somewhere around here just sort of yeah, you try, you're trying to get that sort of analog, not quite totally in tuneness. We can push this harder as well, incidentally, and it might be beneficial in this kind of darker sound if we go even like as high as sort of 12. That's kind of the point at which things start to sound like they might be out of tune rather than just sort of richer. And pushing it much higher than that, we'll start getting. Um, obviously out of tune, so maybe I'll stick it somewhere around sort of 9.5 for the moment. We can always fine tune that uh, as we go on with the patch. So um, on the odd wave, we've got two layers of, of identical uh, uh, sort of patch architecture. Some of the modulation sources are shared between them, uh, the, the uh, chaos physics in particular, which is uh, good fun. Um, but even within each layer, you've still got two uh, oscillators, and those oscillators can even blend between two different waveforms as well. So there's a lot of um, scope here. Um, what I thought I'd probably base this uh, patch around, however, is uh, like a choir type patch. Um, I kind of like that kind of um, as a basis. And there's some really good built-in samples, and you can import your own, of course. Um, I'm going to stick my choir on the second oscillator just because I like having the first one if I'm going to put samples I like to have this one for like oscillators because you've got the sub in there and everything so I'll turn down they're both set the same at the moment so I'll turn down that um, oscillator and we'll go over to sample here and we can start to browse what we've got here um, we can browse by category and uh, just in the interest of transparency I did um, 
uh, sort of do some sample shopping. So I know more or less which sample I'm going to be going for here. But anyway, I can go into the second page here on the wave select uh, type. Um, oh, no, what am I doing? That's wrong. Um, let's go back to the first page. Uh, I just want to come into here to select a um, uh, sample here. Uh, category, we can come in here and I'm going to go down to vocal. There we go. And the one I'm looking for, there's a choir whisper M. You can hear that's buzzing a little bit, and that's because when I came into the other page here, I actually set the um, mod type to um, AM. That's actually the sample there. Um, but yes, seeing as we, we did just turn that on, um, we have the ability to do amplitude modulation and ring modulation on this against oscillator one, which is introducing all of that kind of rasp and, and rattle, which I really, really actually quite like. Um, so I'm gonna leave that on um, as it happens. Um, it was a mistake. You know, happy accidents and all that kind of thing. Um, so I do actually quite like that. And I think on this sample as well, yeah, so here we've got um, the start offset. So at the moment it's off, which means it's going to start at the start of the sample. But the samples on the mod wave have the ability to have different um, start points. And I think the first, and there's only one here, but this will start sort of part way in so you don't get that heart, heart, which I think I prefer having something that's a little bit more sort of on to begin with. Uh, the prob probably the other thing we're going to want to do here is um, just give it a bit more of a release so we can come into the amp envelope. Probably don't want the attack quite as instant on, but... And the nice thing is that uh, this is a, um, a stereo sample. So even with that amplitude modulation, if you're listening in headphones or with uh, decent monitors, you'll be able to hear that that sort of buzzy raspiness is kind of moving around a little bit, which creates this lovely stereo interest um, almost for free, by accident in this case, in fact. Uh, so that's good. Um, right. Uh, We've also got our other oscillator here, which I'm going to use um, for a, um, a wavetable. And again, there's a lot of wavetables on this thing, so I did go wavetable shopping. Um, and there are a couple that I like the sound of. We'll probably use the AB. So we're going to load in two different wavetables, and then we can use the blend to move between them, uh, and the position will be fixed. Um, so the position um, for one wavetable will be the same for the other, but we can still move between the, the blends there. Um, uh, so the first one that I kind of like the sound of, if we come over here, uh, it was one of these Airwaves ones, and I think it was number one actually. Um, so just for the moment we'll turn down um, our choir. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's definitely giving you that sort of classic wavetable vibe. Got some buzzy stuff in there, some organy kind of stuff in there, vocally stuff in there. So it's quite a range, which is really nice. Cool. Um, so we'll choose that one as our starting wavetable. And then we've then got the mod here, which we can apply to the mods on the wavetables and on the uh, samples, but there's many, many more on the wavetables. I kind of like a, um, a static processing that you can add to the wavetable. Um, so you can do things in here like um, take out samples, clip stuff, low pass. 
this organized one which turns everything into an organ version of itself. And you can't modulate these, these don't have an amount, they're just sort of like a fixed thing. Um, you've got the vintage ones which are your sort of bit reduction ones, which is quite nice on this because it has that ringing on it. Vintage 12 ones similar but not as obvious. You've also got um, more clipping stuff, which can introduce quite a lot of grit. If you want more aggressive sounds, that's interesting. And then we've got the tilt up, tilt down, which are like um, EQ curves and sort of low boosts and low cuts. If you want to thin things out. So it's a really useful way of getting more out of a single wavetable. I think maybe just clipping this one, just the soft clip, just gets a little bit more grit out of it, or... Ah, oh, yeah, come on, we'll go with the Vintage 8 one. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, we'll go with that. I'm a sucker for that sort of sound. I, I can't help it. Uh, and then uh, on this other one, I think it was another Airwave one that I quite like the sound of it. So if we throw the blend all the way across, we're now just listening to uh, the second wave table. And I think it was like 37. Yeah, because that's got some sort of discordant stuff in it that I quite like. I'm blending between them. They kind of work together quite nicely. Because one's got a bit more stability. Let's hear it with the... What I might do with this one in terms of the mod is I might use the tilt down just to take a little bit of that buzziness out. Yeah, cool, okay. So those are our two basic um, sound sources. I think the other thing I might do is on the wavetable, I'll drop that down an octave perhaps. Make it a bit more evil. Oh yeah, that low end there. And then bring in that buzz. And of course we'll get these things moving in just a second. But I think that's a good starting tonality. So I just want to come back over to this choir sample for a second. So I had this idea, because it's kind of got this slightly sort of lo-fi tape quality to it, that I thought I would lean into it a bit more and use that to add some uh, movement to it. So, um, so obviously one of the things we could do is just add some straight up sort of pitch movement to it, which I might do, but I wanted to kind of get that sort of sort of glitchy wow and flutter kind of thing happening there. So that sort of instability to the sound. So you sort of go, ah, 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 kind of thing going on. Um, so uh, this allows me to look at one of the really, really interesting uses uh, for um the way that the LFOs, or actually anything, and the envelopes can interact. So what I will do is, okay, so we'll uh, we'll use this envelope here, and I want to create like a sort of a uh, kind of sound, so it's just a really short glitchy thing going on here. We can tweak this maybe in a minute, uh, not what I wanted. Uh, there we go. So we've just got like a little glitch. Um, 
And what I want to do is I want to send that to the tuning of our choir sample. So to do that, we're going to use the mod matrix. So we hold down mod plus add new target. So my target is going to be the tuning of oscillator two. So we go shift and tuning and my, um, my uh, source is going to be this uh, envelope here. We've got four envelopes and five LFOs, so we've got <laughs> we've got envelopes and LFOs for days, and we can obviously send them to different sources using the mod matrix as well. Okay, so there we go. Now, if I maybe. that kind of glitch sound there. But I don't want it to happen at the start. I just want it to just keep happening at random times. So this is how we can do that. Um, so if we come into uh, the oscillator one here and we come into its uh, third page, we have this um, thing here, which is the trigger source. So by default with most uh, envelopes, as you are probably aware, you tend to trigger them when you press a key, right? Um, that sends the envelope going. So the trigger source by default is, is is key down, right? It's the gate signal. But we can actually set this to almost anything uh, on this synth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it, uh, can use the amp uh, LFO, because I never really use the amp LFO for amp. So we'll just pick that one. Uh, so we want to come down to, uh, oh, wrong button. I have to say that sometimes I do press the wrong button still on this thing. I'm still uh, occasionally getting that wrong. So we want to go to generators and we want the uh, amp LFO. Perfect. So now if I, um, uh, and also I'll tell it not to trigger when I press the note down. So now if I press a key, you can hear that envelope keeps triggering. It's going to be triggering in time with my amp LFO. Um, if we come back into this page just here, we can see here that there's this trigger threshold, which means that when the LFO gets over 50% uh, of its maximum, it's going to trigger it. So um, with any periodic um, LFO, that's just going to keep going periodically. But we could... Uh, on here, come down to our shape and pick one of our random shapes instead. And because this is random, it's not going to happen constantly. We're just going to occasionally get these little glitches and we can fine tune the shape of these glitches by changing the envelope that's doing them. And we could fine tune how often they're happening, either by changing the frequency on our LFO, or um, we could change the threshold for when it changes so that it's less likely to go over. So if we want it to happen more often, lowering it would probably work. Uh, so I think it's needs to be a little bit quicker. And maybe not quite as high. Like at one and a half semitones instead. And this is going to keep happening across all the different notes we're playing because um, this LFO is sort of per note. So we've got this sort of tape wobble thing happening in there, which I think is really cool. Bring our wave table up. Just need to balance that levels a little bit. Okay, so we need to get the, these blends and positions moving for sure. Um, in fact, let's just hold that note for a second so I can <laughs> use both hands. So let's let's get these moving around. And I can't help myself. Let's use the chaos physics um, 
because I like to th throw the little ball around. Woo! Um, look at it go. <laughs> there are more important features on this synth, in my opinion, but I do just like going, woo! <laughs> anyway. So I reckon probably like use X for blend and Y for position or the other way around might be just a, a simple way of getting some movement here. So um, mod plus uh, position, just sweep to the side, we'll get Chaos X there. Yes, please, we'll put the intensity, so we'll put position in the middle and put intensity at 50. That will sweep across the whole thing for us, or maybe just over 50. And now if we come back here, we can see that sort of sound is happening as that ball moves across. And if I ping it, good stuff. Like I say, it is really good fun. Uh, and we'll do uh, the same for blend as well. So add, blend, sweep it down for Y. And again, we'll go for 50. And it's just what the chaos physics is really good for is creating organic uh, modulation that is sort of more controlled than a random source, but more uh, uncertain than, say, like a, a triangle LFO or, a, or an envelope. So um, I want to fine tune this so it works better with this uh, sound. So obviously that's moving too fast. So we can basically turn down the time of the simulation here. Like that. And then even if I ping it hard, it's gonna slow it down. We can also now turn the friction down, maybe even to zero so that it basically never ends. Uh, so as soon as I ping it, because the friction is zero, it shouldn't ever end. Um, on this page, we can change the uh, bouncing. At the moment, the bounces aren't adding or taking away anything, which is great. We could also sh shove a bump in here as well, which will affect how the ball is going to move. Uh, and if we wanted to skew it so that it's more sort of likely to do stuff down at the bottom for longer, then we can maybe skew stuff down there. Which again is just going to add some sort of uncertainty to the sound. We could also get this gravity well moving around if we wanted to um, by modulating its position. That's a modulation destination, which is amazing. Um, and we'll see if we need to. Um, uh, I don't want to dwell too much on this. I'll, I'll probably do a whole video on 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 this particular feature. Um, it is really good fun, um, but that's certainly given us um, some movement happening with our wavetable. Um, I think I also probably want to... Um, what's really, really cool here is that um, uh, each of our waveforms here, um, each of our oscillators, if you like, can be panned individually. So they're stereo um, waveforms, they're stereo oscillators. So we've already got our um, stereo sample here, but we could actually have this wave ping about a bit, which I think would be really, really cool. So let's pick another um, another one of our oscillators. Actually, we could just use the amp one because that's already... Um, yeah, let's just use the amp one perhaps. It might be a bit too fast. We might need to slow it down. So uh, again, modulation. It's all modulation, modulation, modulation. So we'll do um, uh, modulation add. Uh, we're going to aim it at our pan there and use amp as the source. And now our choir, which is already stereo, is happening in, in the middle there. And this other waveform is moving around. Great, right? It's good fun. This is a really fun synth. Uh, very different to the Op6, I have to say. Um, being really familiar with the Op6 didn't really help um, me learn this synth, actually, because it's so different, actually. Um, 
but it is really good fun. And as I say, it's the modulation stuff that's that's really, really exciting. Anyway, um, right, uh, what next? So I feel like I want to get some grit into this sound, a, a little bit more dirt into it. Um, and we've got our pre-effects that we could sort of dirty stuff up in, but there's another way that we can do it on uh, the uh, mod wave because the uh, various different filter models, we have a Poly 6, MS-20, we've got the multi-filter and, and some others that are sort of cleaner. The um, MS-20 uh, model in particular saturates. So naturally it's going to create um, sort of grit and distortion. So if I um, come down here and if I give it a bit more resonance, in particular, you can hear that on those extremes, we are getting like grit and distortion. And there's actually a gain setting here where we can change um, the gain staging into the filter, only on the Poly 6 and the MS-20. Um, but uh, we can reduce the distortion by going down to normal there. Um, or we can go the other way and encourage that distortion. And some of those low frequencies get really sort of blown out and aggressive. More resonance will give us more grit. But when you're at unity gain on the MS-20 and you've got two oscillators running into it, it's going to grit up a bit anyway. Some of those low end. Cool, cool, cool. Might be a bit more release. Oh, on uh, not on that one, on that amp. Sorry. One thing I might do also for this sort of patch, I don't want the velocity to affect the amp quite as much. I might have it affect something else. Um, not sure what yet. We'll have a have a think about that. But um, at the moment, when I play lightly, like when I tend to play a bit more lightly, it's really really quiet. Um, so sorry if uh, it's been a bit quiet. So we'll just reduce how much the velocity goes to our amp there. I do want a bit of reaction there, but nowhere near as much as we had. Oh, some of that low end is. Kind of glorious. Okay, I think it'd be good for the filter to be moving around. Um, probably just randomly just to pick out different notes uh, with like a really slow random modulation. Uh, so we'll come to our filter LFO here. We'll set it to one of our random, uh, smooth random. Uh, random five is random time and level. So it's not going to be pit, so obviously periodic. So that's probably a good place to go. Um, so for this one, we don't need to use the um, the mod envelope because it should just be um, something that we can access through the filter here on one of the pages here, yeah. I also feel like we probably don't want, uh, in this case, to have any key tracking built in to the filter. We want it to be dark, but the top end uh, not bright enough as we get, get up there. Or if there is, just barely. But what we probably could um, send our uh, velocity to, in which case is probably our filter, couldn't we? And just have it brighter when I play harder uh, rather than louder, uh, which is sometimes uh, better than than having um, having it actually get louder, louder uh, in, in some patches. Uh, so here, um, so we've got velocity into envelope. 
So at the moment, the, the envelope isn't doing anything, um, but we'll just add a bit of envelope in here in a second. So I'll just try 20 to begin with. So our envelope shape at the moment, uh, we probably just want it to be just on set and then fade out. Plain lightly. Okay, that's way too much, and it, or rather it's way too bright to begin with, probably. So that's light playing. So the other thing here is that our filter LFO is going to be um, random. It's going to start in a random place, so it doesn't... Like, I feel like I have some control, but not enough. So um, two things we'll do in the LFO here. First, it's going too, too fast, so we'll just make it go slower. Um, We'll try there. Uh, but the other thing is I'm going to set a fade so that for the first uh, like second and a half, um, the LFO's effect is fading in so we don't immediately get it taking over and immediately shifting us either up or down. So it feels more like there's a direct connection to how hard I'm playing. So I think, um, again, coming just back to the filter envelope, I probably do want a bit of decay uh, and a sustain down, just so the old notes sort of fade into the background a little bit, but we'll have a sort of a long decay, so it takes like, this is a drony kind of patch, so maybe even as much as like six or, se six or seven seconds for it to, to fade away, perhaps. Yeah, even that's probably a bit too, a bit too fast. And there's a lot of different flavors just by changing that cut off. Getting it more resonance is going to make it scream. Yes. That might be a bit, <laughs> a bit much for some people. Uh, I think that's cool though. Certainly when I, uh, finish the video I might, <laughs> I might come back and crank the resonance a little bit more. Right at this point let's treat ourselves to a little bit of reverb because you know you got to treat yourself to a little bit of reverb so we'll come over to the reverb here and we'll turn it on. Um, I'm just going to use the, the basic overb uh, setting for the moment and um, what we'll need to do uh, because we're on layer one we'll need to make sure that layer one sorry la layer a rather layer a send is turned up. So we can come down here. It's like not super obvious because we've already got quite a lot of stereo movement and sort of depth going on here, but um, so we'll just give ourselves a little bit more size, which matters and a little bit longer. It's just giving us a bit of a halo around the sound. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, so I was thinking probably I would only do one layer for this patch because otherwise the video is going to be very long. But I think at this point, if you're on my channel, uh, you're probably expecting it to be a long video anyway. So let's add a second layer in as well, I think. Um, because I think it would be good to add like a straight up bass thing uh, so that on the lower notes, probably just on the lower notes, maybe even, even set up as a mono synth, we can just have like a, a bass note. So whichever is the lowest note I'm playing, I've got like a, a bass like maybe just a square wave kind of thing happening. Um, so let's come across to uh, layer B and turn it on. So now we're editing layer B instead. We've got that 
uh, default patch on layer B as well. So let's um, if we just move over to uh, is it basic two that starts with a square wave? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We'll start with that. Um, don't think we need to do anything particularly crazy with this. Perhaps we could drop it an octave probably because we want it to be a bass. Uh, so we'll just come down. So it's just giving us that fundamental. So just got that friend down there. I've got the MS-20 on again. Um, oh, I've been editing the wrong layer there. Whoops, don't want to do that. I can add some buzz by upping that resonance there. So without, with, so just adding a bit more fundamental, um, probably also in the amp here, don't want it to be tracking velocity barely at all. So without, and with, so like, we're getting some some weight happening there with that. Um, we've got two oscillators, so I feel like we should use them probably. Um, maybe, so we've turned off A so we can hear it probably. Maybe we could use something like, there's one here that's called uh, boiling, yeah, uh, which is just kind of like, if we turn this one down. just adds to that ringing as the resonance there. Like it's really unstable. I think I might just add. Yeah, it just destabilizes everything. So yeah, let, let's chuck that in there. So we'll use an LFO for that. So the LFOs are per layer. So this is a brand new set of LFOs. So you've got um, you've got the five on uh, on A, and then you've got the five on B. And the same with the envelopes. The physics is shared. The sequencer is shared. Uh, but your LFOs and envelopes are per um, layer, which is kind of bonkers, really, when you think about it. Uh, so we'll go with a random one. Um, by default, that's the morph. So we don't want that. So we'll go mod add. Uh, we want the position of our boiling friend there, and we'll use oscillate two LFO for that. Uh, set that in the middle, fifty percent, so it swings all the way. just destabilizing everything. In a really cool way. Bring the other layer back in. Let's get, okay. I wasn't going to have the filter scream on the other layer, but let's get the filter screaming a little bit more on this layer and have that move around a little bit as well. Um, so uh, maybe we'll stick with a triangle, just make it super slow for the filter. So we're in the filter LFO here, make it run real slow. And we can come into the filter settings and LFO. Uh, 
presence is picking stuff out. But maybe we don't want the resonance going on constantly. Um, perhaps we want the resonance to sort of peak up and, and sort of scream at us now and again instead. So let's turn that down and uh, again we'll just use one of the LFOs, use the amp one as I say, rarely use it for amp stuff anyway. And we'll go for another random friend. Uh, random five will do. And uh, yeah, we'll modulate the resonance using the amp LFO by uh, about 30%. Occasionally get more of a screamy friend happening there. that a lot but let's fine tune the way that's behaving a little bit so the first thing i want to do is at the moment that's adding that sub thing happening to, to every note i'm playing and actually i just want it to be like a bass note so let's make it layer b into a mono synth which is really straightforward to do and in the perform menu um, as long as you're on the right layer if you come across a couple of pages yeah, here we got um, B voice assign. At the moment it's set to poly and we can send that to mono and we can choose whether or not to have legato. Probably I do. And we can set the note priority, which we probably want to be low in this case. So now if I play. You can hear this upper note doesn't have that sub happening. Only the lowest note I'm playing now. does. Uh, so now we've got um, layer B and we can prove this if we turn off A. You can hear it a little bit easier. So only the highest note is going to be our dirty, broken, square wave friend. The other thing is we probably don't want it to go much higher than here, I don't think. We don't want it to be evident at all I don't think so we can also a little bit f back here we've got our keyboard zone so we can set up zoning for our uh, different layers so we can set a high point of uh, layer B which can probably be C5 yeah so now not only is it a mono synth with lowest note priority it now also doesn't stray into our higher notes because it would sound a bit weird if we were playing a high chord and not playing a bass line but we still have that thing happening put a back in so now even if i play up here we don't get that bass note but here it starts to come in again. And we can set up um, fades on that as well if we wanted to, but I think that will probably do us um, for, for this anyway. The last thing that I thought could be really cool with our uh, bass friend here, and perhaps we'll just turn off it again so we can hear it on its own, is if it was pulsing octaves uh, in tempo. So uh, if we... Use our pitch LFO. We want it to pulse, so we'll set our wave shape to be a square, of course. Um, and if I uh, 
come into pitch here. I believe it's in here. We can set the LFO. Obviously too fast. Also that's uh, actually sending it uh, sort of out from the center point instead. Um, so what we can do on the LFO, I think, is if we come into the offset, if we set that to a plus 100, I think that makes it uh, unipolar, so it's only going to go up from that point. Really, really useful to have these offsets in here. So if I now uh, come into our LFO here, and we only have to do plus six because the pitch assumes that it's going to be 12 for an octave, so it's, you have to realize that's what's going on a little bit. Um, but that's much better. Um, we want to set this to be related to the tempo. Uh, and maybe... More like that. And we... Probably also want to turn on sync notes. So when we play legato, it doesn't restart the LFO each time. With the other layer. It will turn our tempo down in general, I think. moment our bass isn't going into the reverb but we could have it going in there because I think it might be interesting when the resonance goes high if it sort of peaks that into the reverb and it gives it a bit more width as well the nice thing about having the layers is that you have different filters per each layer. And again, if the distortion was a bit much, uh, we could always change the gain staging here or use the trim here, but Sounds a bit boring without it now, in my opinion. Let's put some delay on for when we crank up the uh, 
we crank up the distortion like that uh, again. Uh, so the layer effects, delay, mod effects, pre effects are only per layer. It's only the reverb and EQ that are shared. Let's go with a three head one, which will give us some stereo spread as well. Synths are great. Um, anything else? Uh, I tell you what we could do, um, just to polish this off. One of the things that I really appreciate this appreciate about this synth is that we do have just hold that um, a master EQ across the whole patch, which allows us just to fine tune things a little bit. So we could turn that on. It won't make any difference at the moment because we've got nothing going on in here. Um, I suspect if I duck out around sort of 550 hertz I will just clear things up in a way that's useful it's a bit more definition there's probably going to be a bit of build up around 2k ish 2.5 maybe to my ears which might be beneficial to take out but it might also be given a, a fair bit of character as it's lower. Yeah. Yeah, that's where a lot of the character lives, so I don't want to duck that out. And if we wanted to just beef up the low end, not that we're lacking it particularly, we could do that. So just to finish off, just to recap where we're at. Uh, the parts of our sound that we have here, I'll just save it first, why not? Um, we've got um, our choir here, which was our starting point. We've got this evil friend that's panning around and that's all happening on the chaos pad and it's interesting we get different kind of feels whether I flick up or or across so we've got those friends there and then on layer B we have our square wave friend we have our destabilizing friend there as well one thing we didn't use actually is the sub um, so perhaps we'll throw in we probably don't want the square sub though let's use some noise instead so again we'll just give us some extra grit It's all about grit today. And then one last bit of fine tuning, just sort of listening to it now, is that I think probably if we come into the perform here, we can probably just turn layer B down a bit. Because you do want it to be a little bit more about the pad. If you want to pretend to be Trent Reznor, you just use mixed modes all the time. That's my suggestion. Anyway. Like I say, a very fun synth and hopefully a slightly different patch to kick off its uh, residency on the channel. So anyway, uh, if you've made it to the end of the video, Nice one. Thanks for sticking around. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, then as always, it's massively appreciated if you could give the video 
one of those thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed to the channel especially if you're interested in the mod wave because we've got some mod wave stuff coming up oh yes we have um i really want to dig in um a lot into the way that the various different modulation sources interact like we didn't even touch the sequencer today uh, and that's because that is a video all unto itself because it's really really interesting talk a bit more about the, the chaos physics talk a bit more about the interactions that we can have between our lfos and envelopes that can be really really interesting it's such a deep synth uh the mob wave and the op six for me are, are absolute sort of sound design dreams it's just a wonderful place to get lost in as a as a sound designer because there's so much to explore always like it feels like quite a modular approach on those two cents um which i really really appreciate uh what else is coming up um i've got uh, a little bit more op six stuff that i want to talk about um uh coming up soon uh i want to uh, talk about the current state of my modular because i haven't really featured it on the channel for a little while so um i might do a state of the modular kind of uh video that might be the next one i put out i haven't quite decided yet it's not that i have a release <laughs> schedule ever anyway um but yeah uh as always thank you so much for uh watching and until next time take care bye bye